All right, welcome to Fight Back. Uh, Fight Back is the um, the flagship program of Fight Back Media Group here on Spreaker and um, soon to be on iHeart on iHeart.com. So we are here today because we've got conversation that we must have over, especially that um, that sparked over the weekend at the NFL game between the San Francisco 49ers and the Green Bay Packers. And with um, soon-to-be um, ex-starting quarterback Colin Kaepernick. Now, it uh, and, and, and I don't think Colin Kaepernick is going to be an ex-starter because of his remarks or because of his behavior. He's going to be an ex-starting quarterback because um, he's just not playing that well. He hasn't really played that well in the past couple of seasons. And um, that's why the San Francisco 49ers have brought in Christian Ponder from um, uh, Minnesota. Now, I don't know if that's the answer either. Now, I'm a big Christian Ponder fan because Christian Ponder went to Florida State University, but I don't know if he's the um, answer either. I don't know if he's got more raw talent than um, Colin, Ka- Colin Kaepernick. Probably not. Um, but it seems like they're going to go, they have to go another direction uh, because Kaepernick's not very good. Now, that leads to another discussion. Why does Kaepernick decide that he is not going to stand for the national the playing of the national anthem and he has it all preseason? Um, what, what causes this? Now, I, I under, I understand that, um, Colin Kaepernick is engaged to, uh, a Muslim chick, um, who's on the radio in New York, who is part of the, um, Black Lives Matter movement. Not that Black Lives Matter is a, I don't think is a, is a Muslim organization or in a, a, a radical Islamic organization. However, they do have people who are involved in the organization who are. And I think this chick is too. So um, the chick that he's engaged to is, is is hip deep in the Black Lives Matter movement, and somehow he has decided that he is going to take this opportunity. Now, I frankly, now I am as cynical as anybody, and I try not to be, um, but I'm a, I'm really getting of the mind that that he knowing that he is about to become a a pine rider, um, I don't think they'll cut him in this preseason, but he's about to be a pine rider. Um, that he that he is ready to use that as um, this this thing that he's doing um, to um, to say that's why they I mean that's why they benched him because he had to, he took the stand not that he's not performing all that well um, he's looking to take the same approach as Jason Collins or a Michael Sam and the fact of the matter is he's just not performing that well. It doesn't have anything to do with his political views. Now, um, a lot of people, I've, I've said a lot, and I know that there are, peop- there are people who are saying that um, he doesn't, he, like we don't really care um, what he says. Um, and, 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 and I don't. I don't. And, but you know what he does? You know, Colin Kaepernick has the right to say whatever he feels. He's an American still. Uh, he has a right to say whatever he feels. Um, but we are, and, and it's interesting that there are a lot of youngsters on the left. And I, I'm going to keep using that phrase. Um, why? Because it pisses them off. Um, a lot of youngsters on the left who say, I can't, you know what, you know, I, we're supposed to be all about freedom and liberty and stuff. And when somebody expresses their opinion, everybody just goes ape shit. Well, but here's, here's the deal, youngster. Here's the deal. The deal is, youngster, that yes, you indeed have the right to say whatever you, whatever, you, whatever dumbass thing that you come up with. Yes, you certainly do. But you know what? You you have to remember that everybody else has the same exact right to come up with whatever dumbass thing they want to say. And if they think that you're a dumbass. They can say you're a dumbass. They don't have to go along with it. They don't just have to say, you know what, let you spout your nonsense without without challenging you on it. They don't have to. Now, you may not, see, and I'm dealing with this with a relative, you may not like, <coughs> excuse me, I had a Hillary cough. You may not like what they say. You may not like it. But you do, but I, you do have, um. Um. Uh, everybody else has the opportunity to say, "Guess what? This person's a dumbass." And a lot of people think that Colin Kaepernick is a dumbass. 
You know? Because he is. Colin Kaepernick is a dumbass. Why? Because <clears throat> he can feel that way. He can feel that way if he wants. He can say that if he wants. But And you can put it out there. See, here's the deal. Um, here's a comment I have on my Facebook page from 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 a, a, a young man that I consider a friend of mine. He says, "Okay, I get that, but but his stance or choice did not attack any one person. Just the ideals that drive this country." Well, I don't think that that's it, but I don't think that gives anyone a constitutional right to verbally attack him or his personal life. Well, well, you know what? Here's here's the reality. Here's here's the freaking reality of America and being a damn adult. If you are on a national stage and you get to say what you want, so does everybody else. Now, the Constitution guarantees, only really guarantees um, your freedom of speech that the government can't come in and say things about you. It doesn't guarantee you protection from me. It doesn't guarantee you protection from me or anybody else. It only, only, only has to do with the government coming in and and shutting you down. And just because I disagree with you out loud and I may attack you or you may feel attacked doesn't mean that I don't have right to do so. You may not like it. It may suck. I may be a dick for doing it. But you know what? I do have the right and ability to do just that. So if you're on a national platform and you put it out there, I can chop it off. That's what this is about. I mean, and this is the this is the leftist youngsters. Um that's the deal. That's the deal. That is the deal. Uh, let me say I'm gonna I'm gonna invite this young man to listen. Let me um, go ahead and grab the link to the show. There it is, the link. Done. Um, that's the deal. The First Amendment protects your first. Your First Amendment rights to speak, but it does not protect you. It, I mean, I'm sorry. It only protects you. It only protects you from the government shutting you down. It does not protect you from me. It does not protect you from Billy down the street. Billy down the street has as much right to call you a dumbass. In public, as he wants to, it most certainly does. Let's see. Let me read more of this comment. Um, this all sounds like a desperate people's attempt to hold on to a sense of patriotism to a country whose leaders have been betraying them for decades. Um, there's no hope in submitting to to man, uh, man, 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 government, man, man has dominated man to his own injury. Well, there may, there may be truth to all of that, but let's talk about what this issue is. Colin Kaepernick decided that he was going to take this stand that people didn't like. Now we can discuss for hours and days and months and forever about what the country is doing, the direction of the country, you know what, have there been bad people, have there been bad regimes, have there been, uh, are, are you unhappy about this or that? I'm not sure, frankly, what you're so damn unhappy about. Yes, people suck. What, you didn't know that people suck? You didn't know? Is this some surprise to you? You know, this is, this is funny that my, um, that the youngster liberals sort of have this have this moment that oh people suck not everybody has your best interest at heart oh my goodness what are we gonna do ah sit down shut up that's where I am right now. 
So Kaepernick comes out with this big move. I'll tell you what, I'm not going to stand for the national anthem. Ha! I'll show them. And then, you know what? And and then he doubles down on his dumbass by, go, by going in front of sports media and saying, well, you know what? Until I think things are better, I'm going to continue to sit down. Until you think things are better? Who gives a damn what you think, Colin Kaepernick? Who gives a rat's ass? Who cares? Who cares? Guess who doesn't care? I don't care what you think. I don't care what you do. You can sit down for the rest of your damn life. It doesn't make any difference. The fact of the matter is that if you think that people are oppressed, if you think that this is a country that oppresses black people or people of color, then you need to do something more about it than sit down during the damn national anthem. What else are you doing? When's the last time you went to a soup kitchen? When's the last time you, you clothed somebody who was naked? When's the last time that you housed somebody who was homeless? When's the last time you did something about it? Hell, you're somebody who has the resources to. How have you done that? That's your big move? That's your big statement? And then you get your damn feelings hurt and all these other sort of youngsters show up and they get their feelings hurt because the rest of us go, you're a dumbass? Because you're now your feelings are hurt? you got to be freaking kidding me, right? That's your big move? That's how you're going to make things better? That's it? Can't wait till you're out of the league. Can't wait. Cannot wait until you're out of the league. And that way, you can make your big statement. You can make your big statement at home. In your multi-million dollar mansion. Cool. Cool. Again, more youngsters. Um, Comment about, um, let's see, what did I do? What did I do? Uh, Oh, I have a picture of Colin Colin Kaepernick's home, reportedly. Big, beautiful home. Cool for him. He can pay for it. Um, it's got a big pool in the back and um, huge, uh, huge area. Um, and um, the comment is, how can you, me, me as a black man, endorse such a bigot? Jorge Ramos and the Mexican judge comment he made as plenty of racist comments. This is the nonsense. This is a continual bullshit about Trump being a racist because this is the only card they have to play. Every time I go on Ed Dean's radio show, he asks me why. I said, you know what? This is how they do things because that's the only damn card they have to play. Now, the other part of that is that's the, that's the only thing they think black people care about. We don't care about education of our children. We don't care about our crappy economy. We don't care about anything else. Oh, he's a racist, so we need to run to the Democrat Party and the liberals to protect us from the big, bad racists. Like we're a bunch of children. Screw them. The Mexican judge comments. The Mexican judge comments that Trump made happen to be true. Um, this particular judge, which he said that because this judge is of Mexican descent. I probably won't get a fair deal. And that's probably true. Why? Because the judge is not only of Mexican descent, that's correct. He's also involved in a legal arm of La Raza. A leftist, racist, Latino organization. What? Why is that not true? And why, ah, why do the left, why do they only think that all that we care about, that all that I should care about is if somebody's a bigot, if somebody's a racist, that somehow I shouldn't be concerned about the, uh, 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 about being able to educate my child, about being safe on my own damn streets. One of the saddest things ever um, happened in St. Pete a few years ago where there was a freaking drive-by shooting that killed a young girl that was sleeping in the front room of a house. The victims were black. 
the the assailants were black. And nobody gives a damn. 1,786 black children get murdered by abortion every damn day, and none of you care. All you care about is whoever the media tells you is a racist, and that's all you have to hear because you're not thinking for yourself, and you have such freaking hubris to think that you are. You have this childlike mentality that you are so easily led because the hot button word is bigot. The hot button word is racist. And then you're off like a shot. Forgetting where you live, forgetting the people who are actually in charge of, of, of your trap, the people who have, who have designed your education system, the people who continue to manipulate your economic system. And you're stuck. And all, somebody got, and all these people have to do is go, well, he's a racist. Look at what he said. And what did, he, what did he say? What did Donald Trump say that was racist? Now, I full disclosure, I did not support Donald Trump in the primaries. I supported Marco Rubio. And I still am a supporter of Marco Rubio for Senate. But this nonsense, this continuous nonsense about just about black people thinking monolithically and just and all they care about is racist. Why? Because it's simple. I ain't got to explain something. I don't have to look, I don't have to be introspective in my own community to see how I've screwed my own community. How the people who have been responsible for my own community have screwed my own community. All I have to do is go look at the boogeyman. The boogeyman is Donald Trump this time. Before the boogeyman was was Mitt Romney. And before the boogeyman was um, John, uh, John McCain. That was a boogeyman. They're all white racists. That's all. That's all. That's all they got to do. And, and and you and you folks who think that you are the enlightened are the blindest of all because you just follow right in. You take your youth and your hubris and you follow right in. They love you. Why? Because you never think for your damn self. You never take a look at who's in charge now. You're so impressed. By all the trappings that you never think past the past the first level. How many are, you know for people who live especially in predominantly black neighborhoods who are listening? How many Republicans are in charge of where you live? How many Republicans are in charge? How many? Few. Few. And I'll tell you what, nephew, because you're listening. I don't give a damn about my, quote, political buddies. I don't give a damn about my political buddies. And you don't have any earthly idea, firstly, who my political buddies are. See, this is the hubris of the of the youthful left. This is the hubris. This is the this is the wanton disrespect they have for anything that challenges them, and that we just don't all fall over because their skin is tight. We don't all just fall over and go, "Oh, you're so enlightened." When I have freaking lived through it and continue to live through it every damn day. And I'm, 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 I'm reading. I've said, you see, this is where you miss it. This is where the hubris of the left, this is where, where their, all their energy and their piss and vinegar gets displaced because they don't freaking listen. I've said on this show a thousand times, the worst thing that happened to education in America was, was, was integration. I've said that on this show a thousand times. Why? Because what it did was go into black neighborhoods that were thriving and destroy the educational system. It took those kids out of those schools and spread them to the suburbs and destroyed neighborhoods. I've already said that. But who did it? Republicans? No. Liberal Democrats, liberal white Democrats did that to your system. The same people that, 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 that are championing your, championing, championing your track now, that are championing your trap right now, are the people who did that to your educational system. The very same people who rounded black people up through gentrification, 
took them out of their homes and put them in housing developments, some of them the most dangerous places in the country, like, like Nouveau Reservations. It's the same people. It's not people like me or my political buddies who say, you know what, the, anybody can make it, leave people alone. People like Frederick Douglass, when asked about what to do with, um, with, with the newly released slaves, he said, leave them alone. Those of them who have the skill, the want to, and the ability will be fine, as it should be. That's what it's about. Black people can, but it's, it's the same thing. You know what? But, but, but I, I should be able to speak up for myself and nobody challenge me. Who are you, Emily Latella? Nobody should be able to challenge what you say? Nobody gets that right not to be challenged. I don't get it. I don't get it. To my nephew who's listening, you know what, you don't have any idea how many times that I have faced my political buddies that you talk about about crap that happens where I live that they don't know anything about because of where they live. Trying to get them to understand what we have to go through here and what I have to go through here, especially as a black Republican and a black conservative, in in, in, a, in a district that I love. I love where I live. I love the people I live around. But what I have to experience here, I get pushed back from every damn side all the time so you don't have so most of you don't have any idea any idea of what I do Andrew thanks for thanks for getting in the chat room youth attitude reflects the poor leadership of, of, of the country youth attitude youth attitude reflects the poor leadership of the family for the most part now I will tell you that Andrew's got a great family and a great and and, and a great dad and, and um, so his attitude is pretty good most of the time but that is so no it, it isn't the leadership of the country it's the leadership of the family and I'll tell you why I believe that I tell you why because if I in my home can be the biggest influence on my children, that I'm going to change one family, one block, one one neighborhood, one community at a time, the attitude of, of, of the nation. The idea, this whole idea that we should be looking past our own family, past our own house. Hey, oh, you're both here. Great. I'm glad I reached out to both y'all ass. It's great. The idea is... The idea is that if if if, if I can if, if I can get control of my house, then maybe we have a, an idea, uh, maybe a chance of getting control of our of our block and our neighborhoods. But most households, frankly, are out of control. Most households. Or out of control. I love you too, Andrew. You know I do. I've known Andrew. Andrew's in the chat room. I've known Andrew for a long time. He was a very young man, very a very young man, uh, a kid really, a musician, a, and he's a fabulous musician, a really bright young man. Um, you know, I, I, I mean, I was at um, C.L. Bryant's Content of Character tour, um, and was asked a question, and one of the things that came to my mind is. That there has been there had been this battle cry, especially from the Tea Party from the Tea Party supporters. We gotta take back our country. We gotta take back our country, and that's been that's sort of been their mantra. And I was like, how in the heck are you gonna take back your country when you can't even control your own communities? Most people can't even control their own living rooms. So I've said you. Know, so so when so when you come at me that way, I can tell you I have already been there. I live there and stay there. Don't tell me. Listen to me. Take in what I have to tell you. I've already been down these roads. I know where these paths lead. I spent a lot of time poking my fingers in leadership on both sides of the political aisle for their continuous failures. 
for their continuous failure. Somebody asked me on, on, on my Ball Talk radio show about two years ago um, how I could be a black Republican. And I said, here's, a, here's, a, here's, here's my problem. Here's my quandary. My quandary is that, um, that Democrat, the liberal Democrats continuously take black votes and black people for granted while Republicans ignore them entirely. Frankly, I'd rather be ignored than to be taken advantage of. I'd rather be ignored. Leave me alone. If you don't think I exist, fine. That's probably better for me than the constant manipulation, the constant um, taking for granted. That happens by liberal Democrats and the left entirely in this country, especially with, quote, people of color. Because what they have done, and they continue to do, and I need to take a break here, we're coming up on the bottom uh, on the bottom of the hour, or the top of the hour, I need to take a break. Um, what they continue to do is push the narrative that the only thing that I care about, or should care about, or black youth should care about, is that if somebody is prejudiced, if somebody is bigoted, it's the only thing that you should care about. F that! You should care about if people are interested in building the infrastructure of your economy in your neighborhood so you can be successful. Are they interested in, 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 in building the infrastructure and giving you choice in the education of your children so they can be successful? If they are not interested in that, then throw them to the curb. Ed Naran, in the, in where I live, um, is running for um, a black Democrat running for House, I think he's running for the House of Representatives in, in a state house. And he got his commercial and he said that he's against school vouchers. And so I immediately started thinking, so if you're against school vouchers, what you're actually f- for is taking the choice away from poor families, uh, taking the choice away from using their tax dollars to best educate their children as they see fit. That's what you're actually for. Why? Because you're getting paid, you're getting campaign contributions from the teachers' unions. That's what you're for, Ed. Is he being challenged? Hell no, he's not being challenged. Not being challenged by other black people, except for me. I got no skin in the public education game. I don't work for them anymore. My kids aren't in public, public education anymore. I got no skin in that game. But I see... How keeping kids in failing schools by trapping them in failing schools because the union wants them there so those schools continue to get FTE, which is how they get paid. And and once the teachers get paid, that's how the unions get paid. How that game is played, I just get pissed. And all other people care about is if somebody's a bigot or not. You know what? Somebody is a bigot or not. It's all, it's all they care about. Like, he's a racist. He's a racist. He's a racist. Who gives a damn? I got to take a break. Y'all hang in. Got to ring the registers. We'll be back here in, in a little bit. Thanks for tuning in to Fight Back. My name is Will Lawson. We'll be right back after these messages. Information is crucial when you're looking to purchase a new home. With so many choices of communities and options, Choosing the right one for you and your family can be a daunting task. That's why you need to go to New Homes of Tampa Bay right now, www.newhomestpa.com, and get the information you need. Learn how people save thousands of dollars when purchasing new homes. Buy like the pros. New Homes, Tampa Bay, www.newhomestpa.com. It's all the rage to call and order flowers from 1-800-whatever or go online and order them from some nameless, faceless person on the other end. I'm saying you should do something different. You should, before doing that, call my friends at Blooming Days Flower Shop, located right here in Tampa, Florida, at 11618 North Florida Avenue, 33612. Christine and her staff don't look at just the order. They look at the customer. They look at your occasion. They consider the entire person, the entire occasion, 
before making decisions about design and price. You're more than just a customer. You're a friend. Call our friends at Blooming Days Flower Shop toll free at 1-800-330-3297. 1-800-330-3297. Local 813 5947 813-971-5947. You can reach them on the web at www.bloomingdays.com. All right, all right. Well, thank you for being here at Fight Back. Um, we appreciate what you're doing. This is um, the flagship of the Fight Back, uh, <clears throat> Fight Back Media Group. Uh, this, this is a flagship program, and we trust and we, and we hope soon to to be in as many places as we need to be, saying the things that we need to we need to say in the way that we need to say it. Because obviously, nobody's saying this stuff. Not the way that we're saying it. Um, nobody is interested in saying this stuff because you know what? I'm not trying to control anybody. We're not trying to control anyone. We're trying to push forward an, another another train of thought, not an agenda, but a train of thought that will get people thinking differently. By or, or or maybe if I don't get you to think differently, please maybe we can inject what we're saying into what you're already doing because mainstream media is corrupt, is dead. And it has and, and it has an agenda that doesn't help people. That's not interested in helping anybody else. Um, what we saw again, what we saw in 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 the move by Cal- Colin Kaepernick this week um, was a lot of press coverage. Uh, what, we, what, we, what we didn't see, and what I haven't seen, because I don't watch TV in the morning, because I frankly because I can't stand it. It pisses me off and raises my blood pressure. And everybody who's, who's listening knows that the last thing I need. Is my blood pressure to be raised? That's the last thing I need. So, go ahead and take some of my medicine right now while I'm thinking about it. Only three more pills to take today. Great. Um, is what you didn't see the New York Giants standing all all of them standing on the sideline, making sure that none of the players were on the bench. And nobody was hiding. That everybody was standing proudly on the sideline side as a national anthem. Was being um, was being played. Um, that's you know what that's what you didn't see a lot of. You didn't see all those black faces under those helmets standing there respectfully on the sideline. <clears throat> Why? Because the mainstream media doesn't want you to see that. It doesn't want our youth to see that because it ain't cool. It ain't popular, and it doesn't fit their agenda. It doesn't fit their agenda. We've got a mentality in this country um, of how you fix something is that you're burn that you're burning to the ground first. <clears throat> and I think it has a lot to do, frankly, with we have sort of a, a microwave mentality that if things don't happen right away, if things don't happen when you say something, and, and I mean, if you listen to Ka- Kaepernick's comments, um, that's exactly what it's like. He's going to, how long does he think it's going to take? When th- well, things well when things are at uh, better by the way I see things, then I'll stand. What? Are you kidding me? So now Colin Kaepernick thinks he's the standard. He's the standard of all things right. He's the standard of justice, truth, and the American way. Colin Kaepernick believes that he is now the standard somehow, and we can all take a deep breath and uh, a sigh of relief when he chooses to stand. During a national anthem, before he sits back down on a bench to watch um, Christian Ponder take his spot. So, is that really what we're waiting on? Should I sit, should I be sitting idly by? Should I get Direct TV so I can make sure that I got the uh, NFL Sunday ticket so I can watch all the San Francisco 49ers game to see if he's standing during the national anthem? That way, I can take a big sigh of relief and then I can go, "Oh, the oppression has ended." Praise the Lord! I am finally free because Colin is standing up! Are you serious? Bite me, Colin Kaepernick! 
I am not. I will not take on the yoke of oppression because somebody else says I have to. Somebody else decides that I'm oppressed because things aren't perfect. Well, things are never going to be perfect. Why? Because people in their natural state suck. Did you not know that people in their natural state suck? And do terrible things to one another and always have and probably always will. So I won't be bothered by it. I won't be pushed down by it. And I've said this before and I'll say it one more time. I have never, as a 55-year-old black man living in the South most of his life, ever been stopped from doing something that I didn't have the experience or the education to do. Even if I didn't have the resources. I don't know what freaking oppression you're talking about. And I'm still the guy who has a, who has a cigarette burn on his right hand, on the back of his right hand that he got from a Tampa police officer when he was 12. Because some white woman accused me of, of stealing contact lens cleaner from the Woolworth in downtown Tampa. Now, I'll tell you what. At 12 years old, I had never even seen a contact lens. I can't even imagine why I would be stealing cleaner for a lens that, for a kind of thing I, I, I had never seen at 12. Not many people I knew wore contact lenses when I was in 6th grade. I'd never seen one. And this woman accused me of stealing contact lens cleaner. And I was grabbed by a Tampa police officer who had a cigarette in his hand, and that cigarette burned the back of his hand, and I still have the scar to this day, 47 years later. I was scared spitless. I'll tell you what. They could have done anything to me, I guess, at that time. Nobody was watching. Nobody gave a crap. I could have, I could have, I could have decided on purpose that I was going to be bitter forever because of that, uh, because of that experience. The experience I never told my parents about, I never told my mom about, ever, ever. She went to her grave. She never knew that happened to me. I could have chosen at that point to be angry and bitter. But even then, I was smart enough to know that that wasn't the way that I was going to be successful. That the best way to the best way to be successful, the best revenge, is to be successful. The best way to stop all of that was to be successful and become a voice for good, and not out of fear, and not out of anger, and not out of bitterness. So that's what I chose to do. Because if anybody knows my personal story, uh, they'll know that I had a lot of opportunities to be bitter. I had a lot of opportunities to be bitter and to be angry. It wasn't fun. From 12, from 12 years old to 17 year old, wasn't any fun. When I was 17, we were homeless. We were living in a rooming house. We would have been technically homeless. Which is why when I tell the story about I have relatives who lived in a project who lived in a, 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 in the projects when we moved here in 1967 and until last year they're still living there. Are they oppressed? Only by their own inaction. Are they oppressed? Only by their own inaction. Are they oppressed? Well, maybe because their economic system sucks. Maybe because their educational system sucks. The very two, two things that, that Trump talked about, I actually went to a rally, I covered a rally for Fight Back Media Group on Tuesday. And uh, and if you listen, if you care to listen, I um, have recorded um, the speech of Jeff Sessions, Julia Giuliani, and, and Donald Trump. Um and that's here available on on Spreaker. 
on the Fight Back show, one of the one of the now twelve shows that we have up. When, when once we put this show up, um, and then we're going to apply for um, iHeart Media, and hopefully we can get a bigger a bigger footprint, a bigger stage. But you know what? The very same things that have kept my own relatives in the projects are the very same things that we don't concentrate on. The only thing we concentrate on is, is, is if, somebody's, if somebody's a bigot, if somebody's prejudiced, if somebody's a racist. Because the left wants us to only focus on that. Because if we focus on anything else, it falls back on them. Don't you understand? That if I focus on my, the economy of my neighborhood, of my city, uh, of my county, of my district, it falls back on the people who have been in charge of it. It doesn't fall back on the boogeyman. It doesn't fall back on Donald Trump. It doesn't fall back on um, on Mitt Romney. It doesn't fall back on Sarah Palin. It doesn't fall back on any of those people. It only falls back to the same black liberals who control where I live and have for the past 50 damn years. It falls back on them. It's their responsibility. It's it, They took the mantle to lead in this community and have not. And we can blame, and you can blame anybody you want. You can blame slavery. You can blame, uh, you can blame Jim Crow laws. You can blame all that crap you want. But for the past 50 years, people who look just like me, which is some of the very same schools I went to, have been in charge of these communities all around the country, here in Tampa, there in Pittsburgh, there in Chicago, there in East St. Louis, there in L.A., there in, in, in Atlanta, everywhere in the country, Philadelphia, everywhere in the damn country, and, that, and their city councilmen, their aldermen, their mayors, their police chiefs, in Milwaukee, And all these places suck. And they suck for black people. And you don't blame Donald Trump? Now Donald Trump is suddenly the damn problem? Give me a break. Open your eyes. You know this whole new youth thing that says stay woke? Guess what? I got a new one. Wake the hell up! You know why? Because it's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable, and I, and, I, and I know this from experience, it's uncomfortable calling them people out that you might actually meet. It's uncomfortable. It is uncomfortable for me to call out Ed, Ed Naran when I'm probably going, he's probably going to win, and I'm probably going to be at some community functions with Ed. Um... It's it's a, it's it can, it can be uncomfortable when they know how I feel about them. They when they know what I've said. Some people don't do it. Some people shy away. You know the county commissioner, um, not n- not the current one in my district, went to jail. <laughs> you know. Went to jail for um, corruption. Took bribes. Took five thousand dollars in cash from an undercover agent, and then said, "Oh, I thought it was a campaign contribution." What? What? Okay, let me give you some quick background. Um, the maximum ca- during during that time, the maximum cash contribution you could take for a, for a campaign was $50. There was $5,000 in cash in this envelope. The maximum contribution that you could take from any one source, cash or otherwise, was $500. And his defense was, I thought it was a campaign contribution. What? Now, here's, a, again, let me quickly run back to the backstory. The backstory is that Kevin White and the White family in this area have for long long time been one of those families that everybody knew about that they were that they were not clean that they were always on the take that they were always about something dirty they were always about some backroom deal that some people said that they even, that they even sold drugs I don't know I don't have any evidence of that I don't think that's true really but there are some people who said that they're always dirty family but 
because they're the ones that were able to get elected. They were able to, to round up the resources to get elected to office. Nobody said a word. Everybody just sort of said, hmm, well, you know. You know, it's, it's our family, you know. But that's how black people do in the community. Well, you know, it's okay. Forget that where you lived wasn't getting any better. Forget how you lived wasn't getting any better. Wasn't getting any better. Wasn't getting one bit better. Not at all. As a matter of fact, it was getting worse. It was getting worse. That's the deal. Wasn't getting any better. But we won't. But no, 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 no. Make them responsible. Make them accountable. Make the people that make the mayor, the city council, the county commission, the state, the state rep, the state senate, where you live, make them accountable, especially if they're black. Well, no, 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 no. Let's go back 400 years and blame slavery. Let's go back and play Roots like it's a freaking documentary. That's how you want to roll. And then tell me to stay woke. What? Back off, youngster. Grown folks trying to get some business done here. That's how... And I'm, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm almost sorry I feel that way. Like I said, I'm almost sorry I feel that way. Back off, youngster. Grown folks trying to get some business done. We've been letting... We've been letting the wrong people... Take the lead in these conversations for too long and look look where it's gotten them. Nowhere. It's gotten them nowhere. They've been listening to the wrong voices. They've been following the wrong instructions. They've been ignoring the advice of their elders. They've been mistreating their elders. They've been disrespecting their elders, not only in person, but their experiences. They have not taken the right path. And, and look where it's leading them. They have, been, they have been seeing. They have been looking, but they have not been seeing. They have been listening, but they have not been hearing. I said this in 2008. It's time for the children to go back to the children's table. And it's time for adults and I know this is offensive to young people who are adults by law when I say this but it's time for the children to go back to the children's table it's time for the, for, for adults to stop abdicating their responsibility because it's hard it's been a mess and it's a mess because we let it be a mess because we don't, you know, what happens in our families because we don't want to challenge our children. Our children have such passion, have such passion, and they get so upset. And we don't want to challenge them because we don't want to put up with that nonsense. So we don't challenge them. God forbid we teach them. God, God forbid we, uh, we, uh, we, we um, make them live up to any, any standard. We're afraid to hurt their feelings. We're trying to make up for our own personal failings. So they run free. We refuse to address the real problems in our community. Fathers, fatherlessness. I ain't got nothing against strong women raising children because a lot of them, a lot of them do a very good job. But let me help you. Let me say it. I'll say it again. I don't give a damn. Um, because no matter how how good your mom is, your mama cannot be your father. Your mother cannot be your father. She cannot teach you how to be a man. And you know how I know that because of the emotionality, the emo- the, the emotion that runs. In young men now, it's it's extremely it's extremely feminine. Everything is how I feel, how I feel. 
I feel like this. I feel it ought to be like this. I feel this. I feel that. As opposed to what things really are. Let me give you an example that you won't like. I only got about 10 minutes. Let me give you an example that you won't like. I feel that black men are being murdered and being targeted in this country by police and by white people. By police. Let's just leave it there. Well, the fact of the matter, the fact, forget how you feel, feel it's not, tr- it's not true. More white people, even per capita, have been killed by police than black people. And I said this tongue-in-cheek a few years ago, but it's the truth. White crime is freaking out of control. White people, y'all are out of control. Y'all committing all sorts of crazy crime. Against children, against animals, against each other, against old people. What the hell is wrong with y'all? The fact, not the, not my feeling, the fact is that a black young man who's 26 years old is more likely to be murdered by someone who looks just like him. That's what ought to upset you. That's what ought to upset you. What ought to upset you is that a 26-year-old black man in America is more likely to be murdered by someone who looks just like him. Always. That's the fact. Forget how you feel. Like, like you know, I won't say it like Milo Yiannopoulos said, but I don't give an F about your feelings. These are the facts. And that if, I believe that, and I really do believe this, the more I say it, the more I believe it, maybe that's, maybe those things can have something to do with one another. The more, the more I believe it, is that if we were raised by our fathers, we would care more about what actually is than what we feel like. Now, I'm a person, and now, before everybody gets all, you know, gets all crazy, I'm a person who was not raised by his father. My father was absent shortly. After, I mean, that, that that time I told you about when I was twelve, um, it was worse than it was worse than that. I didn't tell my mother about my cigarette burn on my hand because that was one of the that was one of the least things that happened that particular summer. That was one of the small things that happened to me that summer that 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 changed my viewpoint on 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 my place in the world. I related that story before. I'll, I'll relate it. I'll relate it again. So I, like I say, I, I say tongue in cheek that our problem is, and now what's happening, is, and what's starting to happen is that the very same thing, our malady, is starting to show up in the white community as well. That those children are running around fatherless, running, you know, I mean, being being raised by their mothers. Yes. So hell yeah, they're not, yes, they're savages. But if we look at the, you know what? But if we look at the the way that we treat one another on the street, the way that we treat each other in our urban in our urban community, guess what? Is that is every bit as bad? The, the, the idea that black people can afford the luxury of our savage behavior because white people do it too. Is ridiculous. Our communities cannot afford the luxury of the same sort of depravity that happens in white communities. We can't afford it. Now, here's what because here's what happens, um, and we've said this before on an economic basis. You know what? Um, unemployment may be getting better in the general community, but it's not in our community. Uh, a recession. In the general community, is a depression in the black community. Whatever malady, whatever malady happens, whatever malady happens in the general community is always ten times worse in our community. Notice a couple of things. Notice that teen pregnancy was off the, you know, completely off the radar as long as it was happening. In my community, as long as it was happening in um, 
as long as it was happening in, in the hood. As long as um, Tanika was getting pregnant, you know what? People on the news didn't give a damn. Nobody cared. But when Brittany started getting pregnant at 16, it was a damn, M- it was a damn M- MTV TV show. It was a big deal. Oh, my God. Brittany is pregnant at 16. And Jared made her pregnant. It became an M- 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 MTV show. And that same crap had been happening forever. We may have, you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll you know what? And, and I'll do that. You know, we may not have given ourselves these mindsets in our community, but I'll be damned if we can't control them. I am not an animal that can that cannot be controlled. I am not what Margaret Sanger said says I was. I, I am not a human weed. I am not led around by my emotions. I am not led around by my penis. I am not led around by by some some feeling. That I need relief so I smoke as much pot and drink as much alcohol as I possibly can. I am not led like that. I am a thinking human being that has control over his emotions. That has control over his his actions. So this, so this idea that America has put these things in my mindset is nonsense, Brandon. It's crazy. It's punk. Stand the hell up. Be your own damn man. That's what needs to happen. I don't give a damn if you live in a white country, if you live in Nigeria. The fact of the matter is that if you live in Nigeria and you had such a punk-ass attitude, they would crush your ass too. Stand the hell up! If you know these mindsets of consumerism are crushing you, then throw them off. If you feel that you are being oppressed because your education lacks Shore it up. You have the responsibility. You have the ability. Then freaking do it. Other people have done it. So it's not impossible. That's the attitude that we have to have. That's the attitude that we have to have. And if we don't have that attitude, then we're going, then we're going to go the way of the, we're going to go the way of the, of the dinosaurs. Black people are going to go the way of the dinosaurs. We're going to go the way of the dinosaurs. Now we can still cry about how they oppress us and they don't they don't like me like some twelve year old girl. You can still do that if you want to, because you can. And then in this country you'll still eat. You'll eat every day. You will still have a roof over your head every day. But you'll never attain what you were supposed to attain. You will never be the king of your household. You will never, you will never have the queen of your household next to you on, by your side. You will never live in the mansion that you were supposed to live in. You will never attain the status that you were you were to, to attain. And even worse, you will never help the people that you were supposed to help along the way. That you will never help them. And that will be your own failure. We got to get out of here. Thanks for coming today. We got to get out of here. Until we see you again, go out there and learn something. Love somebody. And for goodness sakes, y'all take care of yourself. We will see you when we see you.